Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in today's video, I would like to introduce you to the concept of crawled and managed properties in SharePoint Online. Now, this is a bit of uh, advanced topic, all right? Uh, this is only relevant to those of you who will be uh, building uh, custom search experiences. Uh, but I wanted to take this opportunity and at least explain on a very basic level the difference between crawled and managed properties in SharePoint Online. So let me uh, give you an example. I have this uh, board site uh, over here, board team site, and uh, on the site I happen to have the library for policies, and I have a few company policies, and I just tag them according to expiration date and department, all right? So this is just a regular choice column, and then, of course, I have the, uh, uh, you know, the date column, and you can obviously have additional metadata columns as well. Now, once I uploaded all those documents, I tagged them all, so everything is nicely tagged. However, uh, what happens behind the scenes once this process is completed, once the documents are uploaded and they're tagged, essentially behind the scenes, uh, SharePoint uh, crawls through all the new content or change content and converts it into crawled properties. And essentially, uh, the process is kind of identical to what happens on Google, right? If you publish, let's say, a blog post, obviously Google indexes everything, and um, this way you can type in um, a, a particular you know, keyword, right? And it will be found by Google. So uh, in my case, for example, uh, if I type in accounting, let me show you, all right, let me, I type in accounting, and of course, it shows me the documents that have been tagged against this particular uh, metadata keyboard. And the reason for that, the reason why they were found is because once again, SharePoint uh, essentially crawled everything, uh, indexed everything, and uh, converted this to something called crawled properties, right? So crawled properties is what allows us uh, to execute the searches and find the content, whether it's a keyword or a piece of metadata, just like I demonstrated to you right now. Uh, let me show you how to get to those crawled property, properties. You can actually see them behind the scenes. Uh, again, this functionality is only available to site owners. Uh, if you're a regular site member, you cannot get to uh, either crawled or managed properties, but let me show you how to get there. So you navigate to the site information, gear icon, site information, and then of course, all site settings. And on the site collection administrations, you want to click on search schema. And you will actually get to see the screen that looks like this. Uh, and it's a classic screen. It has not been modernized just yet, at least as of recording of this video. And you will get to see the various properties th that exist in your environment. Now, it defaults to manage properties, but let's go ahead and click on crawl properties. And what you're going to see are all the different essentially properties. You know, most of them exist in out of the box, uh, but some of them exist in just because I uploaded some content and tagged it. And of course, there's all the different crawl properties that exist. Now, uh, we are looking for, um, you know, the one that, uh, for, the, for the department column, if you recall, right? Uh, so I type in department and it comes back with a few properties. Now, some of those are just kind of out of the box properties uh, that kind of exist and uh, have been, you know, created by SharePoint automatically just, uh, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I already had a SharePoint in a site. Uh, but the one that got created as a result of uh, me creating this library and indexing the, um, and essentially the, the whole indexing that occurred is this one. And crawl properties have a unique, uh, essentially have a very unique uh, syntax and naming convention. And what I will probably do uh, in the description of this video will include some uh, blog posts with the explanation of this. Uh, but in any case, uh, this right here is the crawl property that got created as a result of me uploading the documents. Now, uh, now that we have the crawl property, uh, we can actually map it to something called managed property. All right, and let me explain to you the reason for that. When you map a curl property to a managed properties, you can actually execute uh, certain you know, functions based on those managed properties. So if you are into some advanced 
search experiences, uh, building search experience uh, or customizing you know, search experience, uh, you will need to get familiar with managed uh, properties. Uh, so if you notice over here, the scroll property is mapped to uh, this full-on mapped, uh, you know, uh, managed properties over here. Uh, but let me click on the managed properties tab now, and uh, let me show you. I'll I'll type in the same keyword. Let's find out all the managed properties that exist in our case uh, for the same, you know, kind of column name. Now, in some cases, so here we go, the search has been executed uh, and um, here are the results. Now, in some cases, uh, those are curled properties. So by design, by default, the curled properties are not uh, mapped to uh, manage properties, properties automatically. You actually have to manually uh, map them. There are certain use cases where they are automatically uh, created. Um, I mean, the managed properties when, for example, you use managed metadata, right? The terms to metadata, or you create site columns. But in my case, I, I just created the regular library column. And uh, in, in this case, uh, there is no automatic mapping. You actually have to manually uh, map the managed property to the crawled property. And uh, just like crawled properties, managed properties have uh, this weird syntax, uh, all right? So for example, this is one of the managed properties. Uh, and, uh, you know, in addition to the name, it has all this, uh, you know, specific naming convention. Uh, and you do get this naming convention as a result uh, of the type of the column, right? If it's a choice column, it's, you know, uh, it looks like this. If it could be a date column, uh, it could be something else and so on. Now, I'm not going to explain to you how to actually map uh, managed properties to crawl properties. There is a whole science you know, behind this. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, it's a topic for another video. But let me explain to you uh, why understanding crawled and uh, managed properties is super important. Uh, so I'm going to navigate back to my policies library. Uh, here is a use case for you. Let's just say I created this policies library on this board side and I tagged everything against the department name and expiration date. And let's just say uh, someone else within my organization decided to also create a policies library on their site and uh, maybe for department name they used uh, maybe, I don't know, a business function uh, name or something like that, but they actually used the same choices, all right? So they just called it something else. And maybe they also had an expiration date. Uh, what if I want to build an experience? So what I want to do is uh, roll up the data across multiple sites. Essentially, I want to search, let's say, five or six of those document libraries located on five or six different team sites. And I want to roll it up based on the department name as well as the expiration date. Well, uh, once I'm in the library, right, if I'm in a specific library, I can easily uh, do this by uh, essentially, right, uh, by filtering that particular library and uh, essentially filtering my metadata. However, when you have uh, documents residing in multiple libraries and multiple sites, there is really no easy way to bring it all together, all right? So maybe if I create a custom search, let's say I even utilize highlighted content web part to roll up the information, I do need to go by some properties, right, that are kind of common among all the sites. And while the users can create unique names for their, uh, for their uh, choice columns, for example, right, it could be department, maybe somebody else called it the, the division, uh, somebody else called it, I don't know, a business unit and so on. At the end of the day, we all meant the same thing. So what will happen behind the scenes uh, once each of the users, you know, they are uh, site owners, let's say they uh, create those different column names, they upload documents, uh, they tag them. Uh, obviously behind the scenes, SharePoint will uh, crawl all the content and uh, essentially all the scrolled properties will, uh, will um, um, be, you know, be created, you know, automatically behind the scenes. However, what you can do then is create one managed property and map it to these, you know, five or six different crawled properties, 
right? So uh, in other words, yeah, you create one managed property, and then you say, you know what, we we we, we can map it to uh, essentially uh, a particular, um, you know, this particular column called department uh, in one library, and then uh, somebody else called it a division in their library. We we take that curl property and map it to our managed property. So in other words, we all map the same thing, and it will all be united through one you know, through the same managed property. And once you uh, create that managed property, essentially now you can uh, utilize the highlighted content web part um, or other possibilities to essentially roll up, all right, roll up and say, you know, show me all the, uh, you know, managed properties uh, that are tagged against accounting, for example, and it will roll up uh, you know, essentially all these different uh, documents from multiple sites on a single SharePoint page. And of course, you can do the same with the expiration date, right? You can also uh, essentially map the expiry dates, uh, expiration dates, whatever people call them, to a single managed property uh, for that expiration date. And again, you can utilize it in the query as well. So long story short is that uh, you cannot really work with crawled properties, right? They are just a byproduct of SharePoint scanning and indexing and everything. However, once you create uh, the managed property and map it to a single or multiple crawled properties, at that point, uh, you know, essentially the sky's the limit. At this point, you can uh, pretty much utilize it in your queries or if you build uh, a custom search vertical, for example, uh, and um, uh, let me show you that right here. You can actually build a custom, uh, you know, search uh, vertical and utilize keyword query language, which, by the way, utilizes managed, um, you know, properties uh, as well. In any case, uh, that's the whole idea behind those managed properties. And again, this was more of an introductory video. In the future videos, I will explain to you how you can map uh, manage properties to crawl properties and utilize them in your searches. Uh, but for now, that's all I really wanted to share with you in this video. Hopefully you learned something new. Uh, as always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.